The queer community became more politically organized after the raid in order to fight the proposed laws. Lesbians What's up guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel, it's Tish. I hope you guys are well. Today's video is going to be about the beginning of the organized gay rights movement in South Africa. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please drop a like, comment and subscribe and we'll get into this. Let's go to January 1966. So in January 1966, uh, what was happening was the Forest Town raids in Johannesburg, South Africa. And this is seen as the beginning of the organized gay rights movement in South Africa. For Afrikaner society, the work of parliamentary select committee was particularly significant because in 1968, it triggered a debate in the letter of the column of at least one Afrikaans newspaper, Die Barka. It was a historic debate. Over a period of over seven weeks, during March and April 1968, a series of 38 letters on the topic of homosexuality reflecting a wide range of opinions were published in Die Barka, the leading Afrikaans daily newspaper of the time. It was part of the first public debate on this topic among Afrikaners and was revealing of Afrikaner attitude. The debate was sparked by the introduction of, in Parliament of legislation to tighten the regulation of homosexual activities. Now let's get some background on the raids in South Africa and the Forest Town Raid. So this happened quite often to many areas in South Africa, usually townships or areas where restrictions were tighter on the community like black, Indian and colored communities. But the South African police had also conducted periodic raids on private queer parties and also in public places prior to the Forest Town Raid. These raids, however, were smaller in scope and not publicized in the same way as the Forest Town Raid. As apartheid in South Africa grew in scope, it was also important to the government to end the actions of people who were deemed threatening to the white civilization. Gay people were seen as bogeymen who threatened the country. Now, let's talk about Forest Town. In January 1966, there was a police raid on a party in Forest Town, an English-speaking suburb of Johannesburg. Nine men were arrested for masquerading as women and it was a bottle party with guests bringing their own alcohol. Around 350 people attended the party. That sounds so weird <laughs> to me like I think because it's COVID and like we have so many restrictions on going out and people. Well, now that we're on level one, it's not any that bad, but yeah, anyways, <laughs> I digress. So the police dressed as civilians in civilian clothes raided the home early in the morning and infiltrated the party, arresting nine men, including a drag queen, Michael Bruno, whose name along with other attendees was printed in the paper. In 1969, Bruno was named the first Miss Gay South Africa. This high-profile raid brought the homosexual subculture into public view and antagonized homosexuals. Okay, now let's talk about the aftermath of this. So police findings created the basis for anti-homosexuality legislation proposed in the House of Assembly in 1967. News coverage including an article from the Rand Daily Mail described the party as a mass sexy orgy. The press also focused on the professional class such as prominent doctors and lawyers who were present at the event. Later evidence collected by the police was used to influence the creation of anti-homosexual legislation. The legislation proposed was introduced by Minister Justice P.C. Pelzer in March of 1967 in the House of Assembly. The new law would criminalize both male and female homosexuality and sentence offenders to prison for up to three years. This is the first time that lesbians would be subject to punishment under the law it, and it made homosexuality itself, not just homosexual actions, illegal. The queer community became more politically organized after the raid in order to fight the proposed laws. Lesbians feeling an existential threat became especially more active. Queer activists created the Homosexual Law Reform Fund to raise money for attorneys to challenge the proposed law. Law reform groups were created across the country. The law reform movement did cause the South African legislature to drop the proposed law and instead the select community created three amendments to the current Law of Immorality Act, these including raising the age of consent for homosexual sex acts to the age of 19. Black LGBT individuals were also further marginalized after the raids. However, gay culture overall in South Africa found a greater sense of coherence following the fight against the anti-homosexual laws. The 1966 raid of Forest Town served as impetus to create the first explicit anti-homosexual legislation in South Africa. And that is it for today's video guys i hope you guys enjoyed it please note that this is one of the key events in south africa's lgbtq history this is the beginning of the organized gay rights movement or it is seen as the, uh, as the beginning of the organized gay rights movement 
thank you guys for watching i do hope you guys enjoyed it please drop a like comment and subscribe and if you look in the thing below you'll find all my social medias linked down there as well please do give me a follow on each one of them and i'll see you guys on wednesday bye